Hey guys, it's Tim. So I work with a lot of agency owners and you know, there comes this time where, where they decide it's time for them to get really serious about lead gen. And I think <clears throat> on the whole, all of my clients are actually terrific marketers. You know, they're, they are really dialed into what their client needs and they're very thoughtful and they've got, you know, they get some strategic chops and they're, you know, and they're really dialed in. <clears throat> However, that all sort, sort of falls apart when they're thinking about developing leads for their business. And, you know, it's sort of like a cobbler's children have no shoes thing, but it's actually bigger than that, right? It's not just time and bandwidth. Um, it's actually, I think it's a real fear. Um, and it's a, it's a real fear because you know, when we'll get into this particular part in another, in another discussion, but differentiating yourself as an agency is really hard, you know, because if you're doing paid search and someone else is doing paid search, you're doing a lot of the same stuff. And it is really challenging to credibly differentiate yourself. Everybody can do it, but it takes work and effort and insight and thought and all kinds of stuff. But that's one thing. So people get, are afraid that they're, they're not going to be different. But what's really incredible, what's truly, truly incredible, is that agencies are not willing to eat the same food that they give to their customers, to their clients. So agencies forever have been telling clients, you've got to invest into your audience. You know, it's not all about direct response. You've got to build credibility. You've got to build awareness. Uh, you know, you, you, it's not just everything that's the bottom of the funnel. You know, you've got to sort of capture people before the consideration, uh, consideration phase so that you're part of the consideration set. And when it comes down to their own marketing, very few agencies are willing to do this. Somehow they've, they've got it in their head that, you know, that, that they, they shouldn't or can't or don't have to invest into the future. Um, but that's wrong. I mean, it's totally wrong. But here's like, the, like the, the, big, the big paradigm that I see across multiple marketing agencies of sort of all sizes, um, that leads are only sort of quality if they're gonna close this week or you know, this month. Well, leads are, are you know, leads are, are actual real potential clients out there. And, and the, the crazy thing is, Mr. or Ms. Agency Owner, is a lead sort of an expression that they want to learn more about you. They don't necessarily, they haven't necessarily said, I want to buy from you. So they may not be at the bottom of the funnel. So you as an agency have got to sort of throw off those shackles and, and get, you know, sort of give up the dream of, you know, one click, one landing page, one meeting sale, right? That just doesn't happen. I mean, of course it does happen from time to time, but, the best relationships, we all know, require trust. So it can take a potential client a long time to get to the point of trusting you enough to actually engage with you. So before they actually fill out that, that request a meeting or request a strategy call or whatever link that you've got on your, on your site or your, your Facebook, you got to spend some time getting, you know, sort of showing your stuff as an agency. So here's, here's what you really need to think about is you're asking this person who has just met you, they've seen this ad that's got, you know, sort of nifty copy and like a cool, a cool headline and maybe a great image. You want them to click on it, read two paragraphs or three paragraphs, maybe watch a video and then do business with you. Well, if you are a client, you know, hiring an agency is a big effing deal. Like it's huge because you've got to find someone that, you know, shares your vision, that fits in your workflow, who understands your language, who understands your, your business, who sort of understands your approach to your business, who's got the technical chops to do what you want, who's got the experiential chops to do what you want, who's got the industry knowledge. And so like, it's a big deal. It's a huge deal. So we really need to focus on how do we create that trust through our marketing. Now, the sad thing is for agencies, I mean, it's not a sad thing, it's just, like, let me just say it's a fact 
that it takes quite a while for a client to get comfortable enough to, as I said, to sort of do that first conversion, which is, you know, which is either like trade your email address or, or, or book a meeting. So you have got to be patient. You have to invest your time and content and energy into that client. Now, I know that like it hurts because you're thinking like, I've got to spend all of this money and I don't know if they're going to convert and like, how, well, we can sort of get into the mechanics of running, of, of controlling your lead gen opportunity in, in another, in another, in another chit chat. But the thing we need to really think about right now is this sort of period of building trust you got to think about this as as sort of a you got to think about it as sort of a, a single engagement in many parts so there's a lot of things that potential clients use to learn about you it might be your blog it can certainly be your ads it can be what's on your landing page it can be webinars that you've done it can be podcasts you've been on it's been articles that are written about you uh, awards that you've won. And so that all this sort of stuff kind of that sort of exposure to you builds that trust. Now, what we really need to do is think about that, that first, that pre trust engagement. I like to think about it as like a stack of activity. So I call it the growth stack and that growth stack actually involves a bunch of different pieces. And I'm going to share a quick, uh, just a quick slide here so we can talk about it because I think it makes more sense visually. Um, so give me just a second while I, while I do that. We're going to pop, uh, we're going to pop this up. All right. So lead gen isn't single touch at all. You got to stack it, right? So there's just, there's no, there's no way that this is, that, you know, that you can expect to have like one ad and a meeting. It just, it, it's it's not a realistic expectation. So you've got to earn the right for that meeting through your marketing. Now, what I want to talk about is this this idea of a stack, right? So so the stack is actually a bunch of different marketing opportunities. So the first one would be acquisition. Now this can be via advertising, it can be organic outreach, it can be via press, whatever. It's just, it really has just got to be a place where you are introducing yourself to your client. And uh, as luck would have it, um, this is actually something else that agencies are so bad at. You really need to have a call to action with every piece of content you publish into the world, right? So my call to action, by the way, is book a meeting with me. I can help you grow your agency. Uh, and I'll put that as a link. But, you know, this is just your first touch. And you cannot expect that first touch, even if you've paid for it, will generate a meeting because you've got to build that trust. So then what you need to do next is you need to retarget. So you've got to sort of follow that, that potential person, uh, that potential client around and, and actually then show, give them the opportunity to see some other side of you. So you don't retarget them back to that same content. You retarget them back to maybe a, a download or maybe a, a sales video or maybe a webinar, something, something else that is not the thing that they already saw. And so that would sort of be the second stack, right? The second layer of a stack. Now, what, if they come back and they engage, this is where your content really starts to pay off. So, so they're either going to download something and jump into your sales funnel, or they're going to identify themselves somehow so that you can get in touch with them or whatever, whatever the case may be, you know, and it, it, you know, it may take several upfront touches to get that, but eventually those people who are, who are going to vibe with you, who are actually going to get into your sales process, they're going to come here eventually, right? They will get to the point of engagement. Now, once they're in that engagement, you've got to then take that to, to, you know, a sort of face-to-face -face or in-person uh, or a, or, or, you know, synchronous meeting. So like a real time meeting where you're actually having a discussion with them. So this is, this is like one-on-one -on -one sales stuff. Then during this process, if they're the right fit and you are, you're for, and you have enough information, this is where you should be making trial closes. 
presenting offers if it's reasonable to do so at that point, or finding out what the rest of their purchase decision process looks like. And then you need to be following up appropriately. That is actually, that's a separate, a completely separate sort of path because that's a sales path and we're talking about just the marketing path here. So then marketing, once they have gone through that initial meeting, we, if they have not purchased or even if they have scheduled their next meeting, you need to put them into a really well thought out nurture sequence. Now that nurture sequence can take many forms. So it can actually be multiple emails that talk about, you know, uh, philosophy and you know, value and all that sort of stuff that you want them to know that they can ingest on their own time. But nurture could also take, uh, you know, take the, the shape of, of, you know, an invite to an event, retargeting for another opportunity to engage, uh, you know, in an in invite to, uh, you know, to a, to a client only webinar or something like that. So this stack, right, this stack that we've got has, really turned this first acquisition, this first touch, this first touch into somebody who is now very deep inside your pipeline. But you as the agency, you have really got to understand that you have to invest in this because you never go from level one to level four with a great client without, you know, without, without trust. And so you have got to earn that trust through multiple touches, through great content, through retargeting, through uh, presentations elsewhere that are not on your site. You know, maybe, maybe you know, you're doing stuff on Facebook or Facebook lives, or you're doing LinkedIn lives, something where you are building your profile that is helping them move down, down the, the, the cycle or move up the levels, up the stack until that level four where you've actually had the chance to engage with them and put them into your sales process. So the, the, but the, the awesome thing for you marketers is the sales process, sorry, the marketing process does not end at the point where a salesperson takes over. That's a path that's being taken by the, by the sales resource. The marketing path continues because you are sharing actionable information that is continuing to build trust, which will make the sales activity better. So you have to invest in the future. So as, a, as an agency, so you can't go from acquisition, that level, that first touch, that level one acquisition, you can't go from there to meeting. That is, that's a false narrative. Um, and fundamentally, you know, I think the, the crazy piece, the crazy, crazy piece here is that agencies are so comfortable telling other people to do this, but it's very hard for them to do it themselves because they are concerned that they don't have the resources or the insight or the, the infrastructure to sort of manage that, you know, and so, so they end up focusing on the bottom of the funnel activities. But if you focus on a growth stack where you're layering experience on top of experience and then, then into a, a, to a, a sort of perpendicular sales engagement, and then you layer more great content experiences on top of it, you're going to have customers who are really excited to be talking to you, but you have to make that investment. Now, this does not mean that those customers will be, you know, it not, doesn't mean that they'll be coming to, you know, to your sales process in six or seven or 10 months. This could be over a number of days, but really what you do have to ensure is that you're not giving up at first touch because first touch just isn't enough. They don't even know what your name is yet. You've just waved at them. Right. So you have got to do the hard work of sort of, you know, being attractive enough that they pay attention. And then you've got to sort of start to woo them a little bit, show them their great content, show them how much you understand them, just so that you can get to go on that sales date. All right. Have a great afternoon.